uh, during the civil crisis, most of the children, uh, parents were killed. Uh, they have no hope. So uh, plan for the children. Uh, here came in and started uh, giving free educational assistance and feeding program uh, to those children. And uh, we also have uh, medical assistance as well given to the children at school. Mm -hmm. And our doors are also open to the community in terms of medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot of problems within the community mm -hmm. because of uh, there's no drinking water, safe drinking water. So uh, plan for able to provide a water wear mm -hmm. uh, along with Living Water International. Mm -hmm. And uh, the partnership continued. And mm -hmm. today we have uh, drinking water uh, wares in all of the villages. We have about 56 water wares that have been totally built in all of the various and villages. In other villages, there's yeah. 56 um, yeah. water and wells. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, basically, there's no source of income. Mm -hmm. uh, Mount Barkley have been a rescue center d uh, during the civil crisis. Uh, people came from all part of Liberia and settled in Mount Barkley. So basically, uh, the only means they have, like the young girls, is for them to do prostitution. Uh, but right. we have been able to also include a skill training program uh -huh. for young girls who are also uh, learning various skills, tailoring, uh -huh. catering, hairdressing, carpentry, and soap making. So their kids come in the morning to school, uh -huh. and then they can come in the afternoon to also acquire those skills as well. Uh -huh. You reach out to the poorest and the most hopeless yeah. and give them hope and then the some of the people there in the cities that um, ha actually have the jobs and a have some education they help support um, bringing the stuff they make on the market well that will be the that's the future plan okay. the program is uh -huh. is in its infancy right oh, now but okay. um, w this is a generation that lost their uh, out on education mm -hmm. and um, you know, basically were suffered through the years of civil war and this is giving them education. Many of these young girls had never been to school. Mm -hmm. And so it gives them an opportunity mm -hmm. to um, be educated because that's part of the training mm -hmm. is just basic reading and writing skills. And then it gives them a trade. Mm -hmm. so, so part of that education, they also get the trade? Right. Okay, right. that's great. And this it's amazing because you do this for five dollars per student a month right where right. you're able to give them education yes uh, it costs us a little more education yes, and here it does yeah, in the united <laughs> states it sure right. does and then you're also giving them a meal which is like oftentimes their only meal of the day mm -hmm. yes. both of those kids uh, especially the people that live we cannot afford a one meal a day uh -huh. In fact, we have children that walk six to seven miles to come to school. Uh -huh. Because basically, if you stay home, you won't have any meal for the day. Uh -huh. So all of the children have to come to school yeah. to get the meal and then to get the education. Uh -huh. And then they have to walk back home. Uh -huh. you know, so, yeah. Well, what you must think about, you know, some of our kids that, you know, they don't want to wait for the school bus and they get <laughs> not only three meals a day, but they also get their potato chips mm -hmm. and pop and mm -hmm. candy bar. And then they want to drop out of school and right. you know, get into trouble. These children are very motivated, yeah. not just for the food, but they are motivated to learn. And the parents, one of the things I was impressed with when I went there initially and met um, the elders at, this, at Mount Barkley was there were a lot of things they could have asked us for, mm -hmm. but what they asked for was education for their children mm -hmm. because they see that without an education, children have no future. Yeah. And so these children are the future of Liberia. Yeah. I mean, that's just really amazing because you think, okay, people need food. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, you know, tried, you know, United States as a whole or different um, Christian organizations, you know, they'll go into different countries and give them food to eat, and that's great because they need it. But... Mm -hmm. You're actually, um, you know, teaching the, you know, you're not just giving them the fish, you're teaching them how to fish. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we've had, you know, other people come on board and help. Um, initially, the community donated the, the land, two acres, for mm -hmm. the school to be built. And um, amazingly, that school was built initially for $12,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not finished yet, mm -hmm. and more has been added. But within a few months, a school was up and operating.
Mm-hmm. Um, wow. So that, you know, that's pretty, the people, you know, the villagers helped. Mm-hmm. The people were motivated to help and get things going. Because they want hope in their lives. That's mm-hmm. right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to talk about, mostly about that, but just uh, just a really quick summary of the history, um, I guess, with the adoption, how it, how that kind of morphed into this. Well, Plan uh, Loving Adoptions was here in McMinnville for many years, and um, we one of our works was in Liberia, mm-hmm. and we worked there about 10 years, and we were able to help a small number of children, but we saw that there were literally hundreds or thousands of children that we would not be able to help through adoption, and we wanted to be able to do something for the children that remained in the country. Mm-hmm. And so um, we, we had it in our heart to build a school. And, you know, just through a series of, there are no coincidences with the Lord, but through mm-hmm. a series of, of events, we, we met Saw Joseph in 2007. And he already had quite a lot of experience in starting schools and churches and for a young man, he had a wow. lot of experience under his belt, uh-huh. and um, we met and, and decided, you know, this was this was a, a person that we could work with that had integrity, that had experience, and so we um, put our efforts behind getting a school going. And Saul was actually the one who made the contacts in the community. He had already been there, playing soccer with the kids, making, you know, forming relationships, and so. We just kind of come on his coattails, and we went out there and looked at the ground. It was a very hot day. Uh-huh. I was uh-huh. melting. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said, there's only two seasons in Liberia, hot or hot and wet. And I think that was the hot. <laughs> and um, we saw the need and um, came back and gave it some prayer, and our board of directors at the time said, yes, this is, this is what we want to do. And so that was March of 2007, and by August, Saw had the school built, you know, once we... And, you know, I'm amazed at how quickly um, that it went up. And there was such a celebration mm-hmm. uh, when, the, when the school opened. Mm-hmm. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. So I can tell a little bit about that, probably, how excited everybody was. Oh, everybody was really happy. In fact, uh, we called a meeting and I uh, told them the, about the school. We come in the bill and they were excited. And people from all over the villages came to give up their contribution not that they, they don't have the money but basically they have the energy so we was there working 10 hours a day and uh, all we provided for them was food uh-huh. you know for them to eat and then they are working. and I'm happy to <laughs> hear and say it's a Christian school yeah, yeah. so I'm back like at, school. at five dollars a month <laughs> maybe I ought to <laughs> transfer my kids to Liberia. <laughs> <laughs> that would be way, well, way and cheaper the, you know the children they um, part of their every day is is Bible and uh-huh. they say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning, which is something that doesn't happen well, here, you know. Yeah. And um, they sing the Christian songs in their school. Uh-huh. Our children are, you know, you they're happy. Yeah. Our children, I mean, they are blessed. They re- they understand that they are blessed, even though from our standpoint it's not much, uh-huh. but from them it's for them it's huge. Yeah. You know, anytime you start your day with prayer. You know, mm-hmm. and praise to mm-hmm. your creator. Mm-hmm. You know, you set the stage for a wonderful, right. you know, a lot better day that's that's not f- so focused mm-hmm. on self, and mm-hmm. but it's focused on, you know, God and other people around you. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. The, li- um, the Liberian people have suffered a lot, but mm-hmm. they are very resilient people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just am amazed at how resilient they are. Yeah, well, with God's uh, help, um, mm-hmm. boy, anything is possible. And this is an example of that. Um, in, in a few minutes before we show the, the film of what um, y- you guys actually do there, what you know, and see what's go- going on, um, can you just briefly explain um, the Civil War? You witnessed that. You were 14 years old, and um, can you educate people who weren't there, <laughs> which is all of us? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the Civil Conflict was uh, was brutal. And uh, all was about political game, and everybody mm-hmm. wanted to be in charge. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, when the war came in 1990, it was on the 24th of December when we heard when we heard that you know, war was the one of the towns in Liberia had been attacked, and that was announced by our president. And uh, everybody was like shocked in the city. The, far, the next day supposed to be Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, we actually did not take it serious until uh, when the war came into the capital, 
you know, attacked various times, and my father, in fact, was killed. And my mother was shot, and I was able to narrowly escape, to, you know, and walk by foot to another country. I walk by foot uh, one week, two days in the bushes mm -hmm. until I get there. And uh, again, the unfortunate situation is that our president was captured uh. and, uh, and killed uh -huh. by the rebel forces. And for the rebel forces were divided into two. So when he was killed by another rebel forces, it was like people thought that was the end of the war. Uh. But it was actually like the beginning uh -huh. of the war. So uh, I stayed in the refugee camp and a lot of people die. People uh, lose their parents and what have you, a lot of properties. And were you a Christian at the time? Yeah. yeah. yeah what, what, what went through your mind, I mean, and heart is all this? Were you in shock? Were you, did, you know, what, uh, did God mm -hmm. really help you through it? Or what, what goes through your mind? Well, Saul, you should tell her why you decided not <laughs> to um, join the rebels. Yeah. Well, uh, when the war came, they, there was opportunities mm -hmm. for young people, a young boss of my age as well at that time, to hold guns and fight. And then you will have access to food, you will have access to money, and you know whatever property it could be. But uh, you know uh, we have some certain Baptist missionaries that came to Liberia by then, and uh, they organize a youth program. You come and play, and at the end of the day, after playing soccer, they give you bread and Kuwait, <laughs> and then you eat, and then you go home. <laughs> so uh, because the family I came from could not afford about one meal a day. Mm -hmm. So I was always, you know, going there to play soccer and at the mm -hmm. end of the day hoping that, you know, I would get some uh, food and uh, bread and quit and eat. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, uh, we were also introduced to go to church. You know, we was invited mm -hmm. and they went to church and then the next time they told us that we should have a youth camp. They was taking out a youth camp mm -hmm. and they started telling us about Jesus and then that how I came to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So when the war came, I was like new into Christianity, uh -huh. so I was fresh. I couldn't just uh, abandon that responsibility that I have learned, you know, in Sunday school and in Bible study. So I decided not to join the rebels. And uh, I remember my Sunday school teacher used to tell me that I should not kill. So holding a gun to become a rebel and then kill my fellow uh -huh. men, I don't think it was necessary. Yeah. So uh, this is what caused me to flee the country. And uh, I still uh, feel the difficulties, especially when my father was killed. Yeah. But I think we can all contribute to bring peace back and bring hope back to our, to our country. Yeah. Because uh, there are thousands mm -hmm. of children like my age mm -hmm. that couldn't afford the one meal a day. Yeah. And, uh, Thousands of children, uh, their parents are no longer there to yeah. provide that education for them. Yeah. So I look at that, and this is why I have taken a bold step to take up this opportunity that I can go and uh, visit people around, like coming here, uh -huh. uh, you know, to you know, make some, you know, talk around, to talk to people, uh -huh. see how best they can get involved in Liberia, to bring peace in Liberia, bringing peace in Liberia. Not, now the war is over. Yeah. But we still need peace. Yeah. What kind of peace we're talking about? We're talking about a, 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 a permanent peace uh -huh. that where children will have access to education. Yeah. In the, uh, the decade of twenty years, you know, uh, in the, in the, in the civil in the war, mm -hmm. most of the people there, the children, having had opportunity yeah. to go to school. When we open the school newly, um, we have children at the age of fifteen years in the nursery class in first grade. They could not even say S A B C. They didn't know even how to write. But today we can say thank you to our friends uh -huh. of here who have put their hands around us yeah. for those amount of years to have bring hope back in this country. Yeah.